Meeting with the family is important because we physically go to the grave right. and say, do you want mom on this side or do you want mom on that side? So we actually take a second layer of protection for the town. So just signing a, a diagram, we actually physically stand on the ground as we did for Jimmy Branham, who sadly we lost right. last week right. and uh, he'd be buried this week. Yep. Um, has not been buried yet. It's Thursday. 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 That's correct. Um, Members of council, you've seen the budget highlight. The only thing I saw on the, the highlight sheet, again, I don't want to belabor this because we're going to have a full-fledged budget meeting in the first week of June, but 3% raises across the board for employees apparently only cost, I'll say only, but $62,000. Is that right? That's just the general. Okay, it's gotcha. 80 total. Bonus. I'm just curious. Somewhere in my mind, I thought 3% was around 100000 80 total. Okay, very good. Just That's, that's fine. Okay. And um, I think that the committee has come back and said, well, we'd like to look at uh, focusing more on merit increases right. rather than 3% across the board. So uh, I met with the chairman today, and I think I still need to meet with Barbara as the Personnel Employment Committee chairperson and go over these uh, uh, proposed uh, yeah. increases. But we're not proposing anything higher than 3%. There may be reductions, but there wouldn't be anything. 3% gotcha. would be the highest that anybody would receive. Well, sounds fine. The budgets are... And to your credit and to the finance committee's credit uh, and town staff, Jennifer Hardy and everybody, uh, it's much more, I, see, I sense a lot less drama in this budget than we've had in, in five, six years ago. And we'll point out that the uh, medical center will be paid off in this budget cycle. Nice. Okay. Um, we attempted to try to pay it off early, and we're told we, <clears throat> we pay a pretty significant amount of interest, about $8,000 a month on that. So we were hoping that we would be able to do a payoff and then pay ourselves 8% interest, but our bond documents do declare that we have to maintain a 10-year uh, presence, which won't be over until 2019. So okay. uh, that little plan fell apart on us. But, but that's, a, that's a good lesson, though, to make sure these bond documents we sign, that we don't pin ourselves down on the one we're talking about tonight. And any time, that's why we're doing more bank lendings, the town for years has done Virginia Resources Authority almost exclusively. Yep. Okay, Virginia Resources Authority, if you remember in 2014, we refinanced the water plant only after the 10 years had expired to the refinance. We could have refinanced it earlier and saved a lot more money, but the bond docs required a 10 year period before we could do it. So it was a 204 right. issue and we refinanced it in 14. Mr. Mayor, let me go back to something you just said. Yes, sir. You said that there's less drama. Looks like it's going to be. I'd like to point out that there's two good reasons for this. Number one, we've got a tremendous town staff and working with the manager who's put together and guided this process through. Yep. Plus the fact that we've we've had a, a budget plan for seven years now to obtain a level of independence, you might say, and get us well. It gets easier as you get there. And once we get there and do this, maybe from now on, there won't be that much drama. I agree. But I'd like to, I really do think the town staff has done a tremendous job. Especially these last two, three months when we've, you know, among the other things y'all are doing, getting ready for the budget, we've thrown, I, I know that I've, I've Referred a lot of folks to the treasurer <laughs> with the payment plans and how y'all kept track of that. I don't know, but God bless you because and y'all and people have come to me and complimented the town staff on how polite people have been in accommodating, and that's just a win-win. That's just good government right there. Um, we thank y'all. I'll give you a couple other highlights that may be of interest to some folks. Uh, currently, we have twenty-five thousand dollars in our annual budget to uh, perform weatherization activities. Okay. We have not used all, but we've used the vast majority of our program income. So future activities are going to start becoming weatherization projects, truly paid for out of the electric funds. Uh, in the current year, we have 25000 and we're requesting the council put fifty this year to double the double. amount available for weatherization programs. And then the second probably, I don't know if it's interesting, but to me these kinds of things are interesting, I guess. Um, we are preparing ourselves. We, the council has not voted to do so, but we have prepared in this budget and included budget positions to start transitioning to a budget plan. Okay, We think that that's going to be important. Jennifer has done a significant amount of research already with uh, Bright. It's going to change our utility billing systems to a degree. It's going to change from the cards, perhaps at 8.5 by 11, so uh, oh, really? sheets that it can show trends. If you get your... Your power bill from Southside, 
this is what you've been using. Yeah. And so I think our bill is going to start having more detail like that okay. and uh, show what your averages are. I can tell my girls are home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think that uh, we're preparing. We put in a full-time position uh, to handle this uh, and to learn the utility billing altogether. Uh, so there is one extra position in that uh, in the utility department. I see under water and sewer fund you got a new position. Is that for on the street with Andre or is that for out the water treatment plant? I don't think it's either. I think that's. I think that was in there before we hired that. Okay, there you go. All right. We have hired a operator in training, a Mr. Fisher, who works for the town now, and uh, perhaps that's the position that you have. Okay. Well, the initial snapshot of what I see looks looks good. Mm -hmm. um, I anticipate. I'll be honest with you. I anticipated, and I think we will have a delegation about the cemetery, um, but that's not been a topic tonight, um, which I'm not upset about, but. I do think that's going to be a hard, I think at some point when we adopt a budget, there needs to be some sort of statement from the town to just be frank with people about the need for the increase and how much money the cemetery is losing. Just, I think we need to be very candid. Yeah. And I, th I know you will be on sure. just how bleak it is over there. I walked through there yesterday. I'll be honest with you, I, it's one of the prettiest places in Blackstone. I saw one or two places, that, you know, grass is growing because it rained, but and there's one great reason I want to get with you about it looked like it may be settling a little bit yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. with the rain. But, you know, I, but there may come a time, folks, and this may sound like blasphemy, but based on my private discussions with the town manager and some of the finances I see, there's no law that says if you're a town, you shall have a public cemetery. I mentioned Philip. What and would it, it take to sell it? I well, mean. I don't know who want to buy it and just have to cut because there's not much years of making money. But when it's capped, I, you know, this council talked about five years ago of buying additional land to perpetuate the cemetery, and I'm not so sure that's a good idea from a dollars and cents standpoint. Um, and that's just something that's going to be probably very unpopular and may be cringeworthy, but it's a discussion this, this next council may have to have. Um, but anyway, thank you. Thanks, staff. And we'll look forward. Mr. Green wants to have a budget meeting to unveil, formally propose a budget with June 5th or 6th. Okay, the 6th. Okay. And that's when the budget will be presented and advertised, and we'll have a hearing on June 18th on that. Moving right along, folks, we're going faster than I thought. That's all the committee reports. Uh, you have your consent agenda. Uh, there's nothing on there. We'll get to unfinished business. We have uh, the industrial park issue, and I do see we have. Uh, Mr. Frank Carlo with us in our town attorney. Is there anything to report publicly on the industrial park issue with Southside Electric? Um, as of this point, there's been no response. Deals right. Made. We've had you know discussions back and forth, but no agreements, no really any yeah. Um, and I will not go into a whole lot of detail here, but I do understand that the, the I know Mr. Carlo and I have had discussion. I believe there is a possible uh, without going possible way to yeah I think that um, you know we've proposed the meters and the, the the sale to Old Dominion Electric Co-op all of the different things that our our sister municipalities do with their adjoining co-ops pretty much to no avail we just haven't got any traction Tessie hasn't been able to make any traction um, I think some of those things could be done uh, but I think Southside has chosen that they they it, it may fly in the face of policy for whatever reason. Right. Um, I think that there's been something that Frank and I have discussed, and we are entitled to serve our own facilities there. Okay, um, we serve the bus shop, we serve the water tank, we serve our sewage pump station. Uh, there's three phase line that we're all very familiar with, um, and the question would be, does it make sense? to work out an arrangement, perhaps where some of the privately owned facilities over there could be considered town facilities as shell buildings or something like that and I think there's a lot of machinations that would have to happen without being hostile of course right. uh, but doing that which is within the town's rights to do in order to affect shake because right now you have an industrial park that is a baseball field right. quite frankly it's right. worthless and um, um, I do think at the same time I think we've got some other issues going on I think that there's some some proposals for the gravit farm nothing in writing but Southside has been mighty concerned that we're that there's some big industrial prospect. There is not. There's not. There's, there's not. not. I, I, I say that definitively. There's some interest in some housing over there. Right. Okay. Um, but I think there's a long way to go. We just have not found that crevice or that, that point where South Side's agreeable. I've had, you know, uh, uh, board members say, well, you can get a, 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 a phase converter. Those are really inefficient. That just really doesn't work. The solution is 
being flexible and uh, buying the power wholesale from the town and then selling it retail, but I don't think that they're willing to do that. Unless I, you, I would ask you, I'm sorry to cut you off. I would ask you and the town attorney to, to uh, find and look very closely. I want to make sure that we have it in writing that the town is able to service its facilities. And I want to make sure that when that, if it says that wording, it doesn't say as of this date. I don't believe it does. If it just says that the town is able to service its facilities, we can take it from there. Could do. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Norbeck. Uh, item number two, uh, folks, the, the impossible has been achieved with your blessing tonight. Um, we have some good folks who have volunteered. Uh, one or two were recruited, but we have a, before you a proposed beautification committee. Um, I did recruit the chairman because of his past. Jimmy Johnson has agreed to serve and chair this group, but the names I have in front of you are Jenny, Jimmy Johnson, Jenny Davis Bunn, Deborah Moore Colburn, who is no longer a relative of mine. She volunteers. She's very observant. And Blackstone, Monica Frisbee, Ann Stiles, Thomas Taylor, Tiana Tucker, Sheila Mae Williams, and Pamela Wilmot of Oak Street. It's a nine-member committee, and just uh, what I had envisioned, and this council had graciously allowed me to explore, is that this committee would meet quarterly, would have no authority, but would make res uh, recommendations as far as areas in town that may need some extra 10 to 11 care, town-owned and privately owned, where there may be some junk vehicles. I even think it may be... Uh, May, may want to weigh in on new Christmas decorations with DBI, things that we're talking about to beautify the town. Everyone on this committee that volunteered um, gave me their 100% support, that they would uh, meet quarterly, communicate. And again, I and or the town manager is designated because I don't want you to have to have another meeting if, you don't, if you're not able, would attend and it would be sort of a round table. Notes would be taken, but uh, in no way would this be a, a JV council, would not be trying to usurp anybody's the elected authority, and I, I it would be helpful too to explain to them what crack cutting rules are. Yes, so they but the ordinances. Well, would I be in attendance since I am the code really? enforcer? Yes, indeed. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now, this doesn't give authority for Jimmy Johnson to go up to Eric Nash and go, "Hey, your grass is not." Does not. Right. Yeah, it's I just made, made one. No. I move to approve the list as presented. Mr. Nash is moved. Is there, Mr. Thompson is seconded to approve the nine-member. Blackstone Beautification Committee, and I will try to see if we can get a get meeting together in June. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you very much. Um, moving right along, we have the burn building. That's always fun here to talk about. Mm. <laughs> the burn building. William, um, we have received a review uh, because, if you remember, we did not have enough money. The town couldn't front $100,000 for us to match a $60,000 grant for a proposed $160,000 repair work at the Burn Building. So the state has asked its structures group, who prepared a letter for you, or prepared a letter for the town, asking what can be done within a reasonable budget and, and, a, and, a, and a reasonable amount of money. Um, if you read the third paragraph there, it says, it is their opinion that the locality should hire an EA firm, engineering and architecture firm. I asked them if they would be such a, uh, an entity, and they said no, it would be a conflict of interest mm. for them to do it, but they could provide us uh, through the state a list of engineering firms to do that. I don't think B&B &B is a burn building expert. So um, my recommendation and request from the council is to authorize RFP to hire an architectural firm to wade their way through it with the intention that the grant monies would pay, if not all, but certainly a, 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 an approved portion Can of those NAFs. Can paid out of the burn building checking account? Yeah, whatever funds they have. It, it, the intention is to use up those funds first, okay? But the match for the construction, I think, is going to fall on the town. So this may be our way to finally level that checking account. Right. Once and for all, be done. Falls on the town. And it's fine to make that in the motion that we'll, we'll do that. Entertain a motion to authorize the manager to seek our, to issue an RFP. So, so, second, can you add that we use the burn building so funds moving. to match until completed? So can you second that, Mr. Scott's motion? All in favor say aye. Yeah. Uh, opposed? The ayes have it. Next up, y'all bear with me. We're going a little faster. Uh, Keep Virginia Beautiful. Uh, this is a grant application, I believe Yvonne has been involved with. Is that correct? Yeah, it's a, it's a small grant to plant flowers and uh, annual plants. Adopt a pot. Is it flower pots? Or that one's on the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. um, that's just informational. Informational. Was, I had a business owner on North Bend say he was purchasing new pots for out there. There's one block in 
downtown that does not have flower pots is the block where Mr. Bowers building and the antique mall and the Emporium Herb College. There are no town owned pots through there. And we had proposed it at one time and I think there was some money left over in the Centennial Fund. Um, if council would like to, I think if we can get people to take care of them, that's gonna be the biggest question. But uh, that one block does not have any flower pots. Okay. I don't know why that is. Might want to buy different. several, I'd say. <laughs> What's in the Centennial Fund? <laughs> I wonder why that block was left there. Just oh, interesting. They just, there it's are the Yeah, that's. Excuse me very quickly. Okay. Black stone Centennial Fund has, uh, this is true cash, 8252. $8,252. But we're looking, get, at, can, looking at new Christmas decorations too correct, now. Yeah. Yeah. Can you get, I'm not going to vote for any. Can you get us a cost of what those pots would be? I don't know. And we'll enough. vote on it at a later date. And we need to the know. shipping is probably as much as the yeah, pots. The Right. All right. Um, what is council's pleasure? You want to just that's just informational, but yep. mm -hmm. all right, we'll keep okay. an eye on those funds. Uh, moving on to ongoing projects, Mr. Rollback, nothing on one and two. Uh, dilapidated building, just so you know, the next one that we're working on is Man Street, and we have a property owner I believe is agreeable. We have a burn on F Fall Street, and if you hadn't noticed the building behind Blackstone Glass, there's a house. The front of it's torn off. I don't know what happened to it, where it went, whatever, but uh, at some point the front of the house came off. It is condemned, but I think the building has been sold or the property over there at the glass shop has been sold, and I think there's a new property owner. Those are our three most active uh, dilapidated buildings. Keep up the good work. That's, that's important Anything stuff. Anything on the old funeral home on Church Street that's obviously an eyesore with the hole through the it's roof? It's got a hole in the roof. I uh, do think we need to take action to get it done, but at the same time, I think it only fair that we take action with the county for their dilapidated school buildings that have roof leaking as well. And I think that there's a fairness issue that the county also be held to the same standard as private residents. And uh, if you guys haven't been in those buildings, you know there's gaping holes. You know, in the we have visitors coming to Blackstone this summer for the. For, I know one state term we're having. That, that's, they're going to see those buildings. Mm -hmm. Do you need a motion for that effect? I. Um, yeah, it'd be sense. fine. Yeah, certainly it's always better to have a motion than not. What is a motion? Uh, that the town enforce actively enforce the building code structures. issue on all structures that have roof um, deterioration. Deterioration. There you go. All right, Mr. Nash has made that offer. That motion is there a second? Second. Mr. All right, Madam President, has seconded. All in favor? Yes, Mr. Miller. Okay, you know, like that school building you talking about over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And the reason why I'm asking this question about dealing with the gators, I know what it is. Now, if a kid goes up on top of their roof, and that kid falls in that roof and gets killed, who's responsible for that? Well, there would, I would imagine uh, there would probably be some lawsuit or, the, you know, it's county-owned property, but we... The school system owns the property, but our lease does require us to carry liability insurance on the structure. So I dare say the deepest pockets probably would be the ones picked on. Quickly pursued. Citing public health, welfare, and safety. Mm -hmm. I'd have, I would add, Adam Clark, to add those words to Mr. Nash's motion with his blessing for the general health, safety, welfare of the people of Blackstone. Um, motion's been made and seconded. All in favor say aye. <coughs> Opposed? The ayes have it. Now, the mechanics of that motion, just to be, it's sort of ironic. We have basically, that motion sounds really strong and effective. But now we have to basically say, uh, can we speak to Dean, please, the Bill County Building Inspector? Yeah, we just passed a motion. And now, do you think, you know, Mr. Lewis has got to do what his boss is telling him? Well, you got to look at, I mean, we hold the liability I'm with you, on man. that building. So I'm we with need you. to make sure that. Our property is, and granted, we don't own it, but we technically own it. And I think there's been some some question about the terminology in the lease. The mayor's asked me a time or two. It's been some time ago. Um, what is standard maintenance or, or typical maintenance? I don't think putting a new roof on one of these dilapidated buildings is typical maintenance. And I think some on the board of supervisors or at the county insist that is part of the town's responsibility to put a roof on this building and I, I don't think that's the case and I don't think the, the, the verbiage in the lease indicates that. It does not, does not specify. Yeah. All right. Very good. And maybe the response you get, be prepared for that, that the county may respond by saying Typical maintenance isn't even cutting a tree down. I mean, but yeah, we typical cut maintenance is cutting grass, breaking leaves, all those kinds of things. 
Very good, good, very good. Um, item number three, we're waiting on Whitehurst Paving to begin tar and gravel in the majority of, of Council President Thompson's ward. Mm, so still Merchant Falls Loop, uh, that area will be tar and gravel. Tar and gravel. This summer. And you're waiting on bids for painting curbs on Main Church and Brown Streets. And the parking spaces on the portion of North Main Street in front of the Herb Cottage, the Steel Bangers. Yes. Well, we sealed that. We didn't, and the spaces at Napa, we got three spaces. Very good. Do. Very good. Mm -hmm. Nothing on Rigglesworth other than the fact that I know that we're well aware there have been two B&Es in the last, was it a four-day period? The most three recent were, uh, I believe that there has been a suspect who has admitted. A week. Good. Be within the same, yeah, two within the last week. Bring that up. Can we think about something? Either putting a security system up there or upgrading the doors? Well, I think on that door that keeps getting pried open, I think it's simple if we were just put a two by four on the back side of the window because what they're doing is they're pushing it in. They're taking the uh, so propane canister and bashing in the two by four on the back side. They can't push it in. I, I think know. we talked about that. We met the chief and I met today about what can we do? What's the best thing to do? I'm, I'm nervous about an alarm because I don't want the false alarms like we had constantly. A squirrel gets inside and the next thing you know, we've got the fire department headed over there at <clears> two <throat> in the morning. So I'm a little nervous about straight up alarm. But it, what we've asked is if Sam Murphy could maybe help us give us some ideas on cameras that observe from the outside and maybe a lighting system that will come on if there's a motion mm -hmm. and uh, that it maybe it will notify somebody by, by uh, text by text or phone, okay, instead of having to dispatch out the fire department every time. Now, uh, the most recent ones that were caught this week was one adult and two juvenile. Mr. Green had a point. I spoke with Ms. Mrs. Martin today, mm -hmm. and she's meeting with somebody about security, and we'll speak to Dan and mm -hmm. be in touch with you. I'm going to ask you to continue this meeting to June 3rd for budget purposes. Yes, yeah. And was it maybe June 3rd? we could take it up. Was it June 3rd? 6th. June 6th. June 6th. Yes, well, I okay. mentioned that earlier. And yes. we could take it up then. We'll hear from them. and Okay. We can work on it, our end, their end, and maybe we can. I mean, we can call Rudy Elder, too. He's a local security alarm Absolutely. guy and see if he's got a suggestion. She's Absolutely, yeah. It's, uh, she's, she's on top of it. Very good. Um, moving right along, East End neighborhood, we've discussed that. and. That's moving along. <coughs> when, when will we find out the grant? The grant application awards will be late July, June. Late July, August. Okay. All right. Weatherization item number six: The county of Nottaway declined our request to help someone in need uh, in our town, and so you're recommending taking fifty thousand dollars of weatherization funds. Will that be enough? Because earlier you said it would be sixty thousand dollars. Southside Outreach has agreed to put in ten thousand dollars. There. Wow. Okay. Outside outreach, which is early yes, early. Yes. They have some cash available and they will put ten thousand. But sadly this will zero out the account in the weatherization. Wow. However, our request in the budget would replenish those funds after the first of July. <coughs> this is a pretty <coughs> for my ignorance for you. Apple, apple. <coughs> there a question on this. Mr. Mockure has a floor. Mr. Mockure has a floor. Is there weatherization is this not going deep too deep for that when we are replacing a whole house? We rebuilding somebody's house, uh, and, and granted, the money that we put have for weatherization really doesn't go around as far as we'd like it to go. But at least more than one person is getting some good out of it. Right. And if you've got two or three people who get their electric bills cut by the simple fact that the homes been weatherized a little bit. Doesn't that draw a little more water than, than say, well, this person needs a new? I know a lot of people need a house. Well, I think staffs, if I recall the letter, that, and you, your point is well made, I believe, but the staff call this a dire emergency. It's it's pretty a bad, yeah. Person on oxygen with relying on a uh, space heater or a uh, fuel kerosene heater. Um, and they, have, they do now have running water, but no hot water. And, uh, and dirt floors in some of the rooms? Portions of the floors that are gone. Well, and it's a tragic situation. We tried to stretch the money by going to the county. And sadly, the county has $80,000 of program income. Well, forgive me. Would you please explain to me why the county won't help? I can tell you what they where, said in the letter. Where did they use that money? They said they feared it was starting to say dangerous president. That's what they said in the letter. Mm. So but that hoard, money is obligated the, to be used for such a purpose. Money. Is that what you're saying? Just, just hoard the citizens' <laughs> money. Instead of using it where it needs to be used. Is that what you're saying? Okay. I don't want to 
necessarily do it. I would have rather been the county and town together and everybody gets skin in the game, but the county has said Say we have $50,000 currently in the weatherization fund. Yeah, that would have played it. There's 50 cash. Oh, we, in, you, didn't we use all that? It was we all used program, all the program income. income. And there's two different things. Program income is when grandma brings her $25 down to the town <clears> hall every month and pays her monthly payment on the renovation. Technically, we've used our weatherization money for the most. I mean, granted, it's there in a different line item, but... No, there's actually $50,000 of cash sitting in the weatherization, not including the program income. This would eliminate the annual or the two twenty-five thousand dollars But July 1st, a new budget would replenish it back to fifty. dollars if, if approved, then another 50000 over the course of the next fiscal year would be added to it. It's, I've had a lot of people ask me about, you know, gosh, the town, you know, y'all are starting to build people's houses now. And I said, folks, you know, you, you have staff, they discover emergencies, the money is sitting there, it's not... It's technically, of course, I guess technically it is taxpayer money, but it's money that can only be used for something like this. It's utility payer money. It comes directly out of the electric fund. Right. And uh, the, the electric bills that people pay every month, we take a portion of that and set it aside for intended to be weatherization. And yes, we'd like to do five houses a year, but man, we're running into houses that, that need more than $10,000 right. a month. Well, is that what, my whole point is, is this any different than finding somebody a family who's on the street homeless, don't have a home, and saying we need to build a home for them? It's different, but not much. The spirit's the same. It's an act of generosity um, well, with the people's money, certainly. certainly. Do they make payments into the program income fund? They would make payments based on their income. Correct. So some people Whether have, it's $5, I mean, that's all. I think our minimum is like 25 bucks a month, but um, I, I don't know their specific income, so I would assume it would be... What uh, happened? You said they're on oxygen, so obviously they're elderly. So what happens... Once they pass, obviously $25 a month isn't going to pay for the $50,000. No, they have a, for example, say we put a 10-year deed of trust on there, okay? You would amortize it over 10 years to cost, okay? Half forgiven, half forgiven, and the other half that they have to pay based on their income. There's a slight calculation, your home household expenses and all those kinds of things. So nobody really, unless they come into a lot of money, or they specifically sell the house. And uh, I think there was one in Castle Trailer Park when the past few years the fella was in a nursing home and I think they sold the house and the town was paid the full amount of the deed of trust. Because it was within the 10 year period. It was within the After period. the 10 year period, like on North, Northwest Avenue. Yeah. Right. But they've paid half of what it is. Half is their obligation. But if you amortize it out and say it was 125 a month, they may only pay 50 because of that calculation. But every month it comes a little bit more. A pro rata share comes up. But many people have asked me about the house on Northwest Avenue. The time has expired. It's 2007. Right there. There's a for sale sign in the yard. People have, can they? They can. The deed of trust is satisfied. Okay. We've been repaid. As we well, on that particular one, that was an indoor plumbing and rehab program. There was not an actual payment. That's a 100% grant project. Okay. But if they sold it within the 10 years, then they had to pay the outstanding portion of that principal. That was All right. So the town manager's recommended to, to I, let me recognize Mr. Wayne Mitchell real quick. Yes, sir. Then we'll have a motion. <clears throat> on these houses, uh, Philip, by the time we looked at it one time when, when uh, we were talking about insulating the houses and you do the walls and not the ceiling. We do the ceiling, not the wall, not typically the wall, on, okay. on a weatherization. And that's that I never understood that. Why, why is it? Who, who determines what? <coughs> why is that so you don't have to tear walls down, I guess, it's cost effective. The most cost effective bang for your buck is doing the ceilings, and the decisions are made uh, by, by the Housing Rehab Board ultimately. Right. But I think the recommendations are made by Earl and Arlene. No, it's outside outreach. Okay. I'm not an expert on it, but uh, we rely well, on it. It's easier one. to get in the ceiling than into the walls. Yeah, but I mean, for saving the heat. Yeah. The walls. I think he, he, he goes up. Right. Members of Council, I entertain a motion for the town manager's recommendation to take the $50,000 and to rebuild this. Is that going to completely rebuild the house? Tear it down and rebuild it. The Southside Outreach Group is going to put in 10000 The estimate of a $60,000 project. It's not a renovation. It's a demolition and a new house. So 60, you're, you're saying that they're going to replace the house for $60,000? And demolition. It's what we've been doing on Church Street for the most part. They're roughly $60,000, correct? New homes? Uh, I don't think we have a new one on Church Street, but in that project in area. In that project yeah. area. Uh -huh. A three-bedroom. All right. We're good. We're good. Um, I didn't know if it All right, let's see here. Do we want to make a mo motion to uh, approve the recommendation? So moved. So moved. All right. Second. Motion been made and seconded, and I will ask for a roll call vote because this involves $50,000 of local funds. Starting with Mr. Scott. Aye. 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 Aye.
Right. Motion carries 7 0. Moving right along, next up you have uh, under rental property maintenance, we're going to get real aggressive with that. And the town manager has informed you that the county will charge the town $50 per unit for inspection, which I assume the town can pass along to the property owner. I think, I think the intention would be to pass along that okay. did, uh, Before we move on much further, did you get a letter from the county stating what their reason is for not supporting? Yes, portion? I, I've got it. Did I not pass along to you? To the fields? Yes. Yeah, yes. I'd like to see. Okay. I'd like to see their justification. Yeah, I'll, I'll get it and for if, you. If they don't justify it in there, I'd like for us to request a justification. Okay. What I can they plan to use that eighty thousand dollars for? I thought I had that. It's, I've, they had, I thought I sent you. Anyway, I can tell you that, and I will definitely get you a copy. The, the main thing they said was uh, the the president it would set. They didn't say dangerous. They they concerned about the president it might set. Um, okay. Well, but I will get you. Well, definitely that, have the right to see a letter. That being said, what are they planning on doing with the money? That's a, that's a very fair question. Every locality that receives DHCD funding has to have a program income plan. They have submitted one to the Department of Housing and Community Development, and it should be public information Is and public, public document. You, Do you have any idea what it might say? Do you have any idea? I'm, I'm like sure it says there. housing for low moderate income individuals. Okay, I'd like to see it. Yeah, very good. I will, will your office request a copy? I will tomorrow? request a copy from County Administrator tomorrow for a copy of their program income plan, which is a mandatory document for them to participate in programs. <clears throat> but the town manager wants to... Um, here on this rental inspection wants a appeals board, five members and two alternates. And I do have a name of someone that wants to get involved with the town. Um, and I'll offer her name at the council member, but Monica Fris Frisbee uh, would like to ask to volunteer and be more active in things. Um, David said she wanted to be on that. Well, that's two good ones right there. Um, so let's keep that staff, we'll keep those names. We will have a public hearing at the June council meeting. That public hearing will be to revise the current ordinance that's in place, putting in a new building code to be enforced, maintenance code section that, to be enforced, and instituting the $50 fee, whereas now, I think the first two inspections are free, and then subsequently would have a charge. So this would be for the first inspection. All right, so at the next council meeting, we'll have a public hearing on the change in the ordinance, and members of council, if we can get everybody to bring up five names and two alternates. Okay, that's a, that's a good one. All right. Is there a reason that we're being, I mean, I hate to keep banging on the county so much, but I mean, we pay for this service already, correct? Uh, I think building inspections are paid for out of your, as a resident of Nottoway County, you pay your taxes. We don't pay them directly any kind of a payment for, for uh, correct. I mean, the yeah. services. But your building permit fees, you know, that's used to help fund a salary, but they, they said they figured that they talked, they, I, I, was in, I was at the meeting when they said this, that Dean estimated that for every rental property unit, it would probably take about an hour to, to give it a proper inspection. And so they, they came up with $50 an hour, $50 per unit. And that's um, part of the job, I figured. Yes, Mr. Miller. Are they going to tell us exactly what they're looking for? So the land, will, you know, yeah. what I'm yeah. saying is. You're going to put oh, yeah. the code yeah, that it will tell you everything. Yeah, they're going to be, we've got the ordinance written right now pretty much. I mean, it goes back to 1998. And at one time, Jennifer Beck was doing that. It got, but it was, I remember she said it was very cumbersome. When, when, uh, They'll be enforcing the 2012 USBC Virginia Maintenance Code. Right. Right. But basically, what I think would be wise, Mr. Vanuback, obviously I think Yvonne will have a plan, probably shooting around town. But I think obviously we will probably encourage people, they know someone that's living in rental property or they themselves live in a rental property that's got you know holes in the floor or things like that or no heat. They would certainly be put on the top of the list to do an inspection and to, and to cite that. Um, and bring them into compliance. Try to get the most critical ones. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. okay. Moving right along, folks. Um, what's next, Mr. Rebecca? We have a... Uh, Utility upgrade project. Yes, go right ahead. Utility upgrade project. That is the project where we're doing renovations at the water plant and the wastewater plant. That is out to bid. It does not include the water lines that are a portion of that, which would go from the main gate back to the bowling alley. We're going to lump that with the east end project and try to keep all the line work together in one, and hopefully we'll, we'll get a better price on that. But uh, specific to what's advertised, it's renovations to the water and to the wastewater plant. And I believe on June 5th, we are opening bid. Anybody right. would be so inclined to join. Very good. This information you have in front of you, folks, an engagement letter from Davenport and Company. Uh, not Davenport. Uh, Robinson Farmer Cox Associates. It's the same fee as last year. Is that correct? That's correct. I swore I remember Mr. Green saying that instead of being $20,600, it was $20,000 flat. Um, Members of Council, what's your pleasure? I like 20000 myself. 
<laughs> I, I move that we uh, we uh, authorize the town manager to sign this agreement um, and ask for it to be amended to twenty thousand even. And the mayor. All right. We'll both sign it. Is there a second to Mr. Green's second. motion? Second. Mr. Tucker has seconded. All in favor say aye. aye. Roll call vote starting with Mr. Scott because it's over 10,000. Aye. 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 Motion carries 7 0. Next up, we have a. Uh, we're going to build the state police as we always done at the same price to pick up the trash on Ridge Road at the driver training facility. Members of council, what's your plan? It's $4,640 per year. Okay. Mm -hmm. One, Mr. Mike here is moved. Second. Mr. Nash is second. Mr. Nash, you had a question? We have had one year of doing this, correct? I think we've had two years of doing it. Has it been a hassle? We'll have, I, mean, I haven't heard of we're first losing complaint. Money. We're not. not that I'm aware of. I mean, we're picking up $320 a month, I believe. Have you ever priced out what it would cost for them to have some money come out? A lot more than that. And that's the reason they came to us, because I think they priced a private service, either mm -hmm. ducks disposal did, or something like that. They did when that. it came to us the first time. This is I, definitely a symbiotic relationship. Yep. Very, very good. This is a, a, a yeah, vastly less expensive option than a problem. on the table, though. Yeah, <clears throat> you, you, we probably could get a, get an increase to it. Motion has been made and duly seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Next, you have a resolution of a joint land use study with Pickett, and Nottoway County did adopt this um, at their meeting Thursday night, and they made a big fuss about the fact that you're not committing to anything. It's You're going to strongly consider zoning and recommendations. Some of you may or may not. I have not met this show about it. I'm like, she's with the staff, or she's she the intern? She's an intern. Okay, the great. Intern. <laughs> All right. Good to see you. She's Holly Steele. She's from Amelia County. I know her mom and dad very well. Okay. She's a recent graduate of Virginia Tech and is doing a multiple month internship. And one of the things that she's working on is joint land use study that's being proposed by Pickett. And I've asked Holly to make a presentation and answer any questions. Right. Um, so as he said, I've been the point of contact for about the uh, last month or so um, for the joint land use. Um, May 1st, I went to the meeting for this. Um, there were representatives from the Department of Defense and the local jurisdiction. So the people included in this are Pickett, Blackstone, Nottoway, Dinwiddie, and Brunswick. They left Lunenburg out of this because they didn't feel like they had enough of an impact. They didn't respond right. to that. Um, so essentially what they're trying to do is pinpoint current and future encroachment sources that could lead to conflicts between Pickett and the surrounding jurisdictions. Um, their overall goal is to give Pickett space to expand, but also allow jurisdictions like Blackstone to develop sustainably as well. Um, so as you just mentioned, I did speak with John Procise when we made this, and this does align with the resolution that Nodway adopted. Um, the main difference is that they did not put represent, um, putting a representative to the policy committee on theirs, but they are doing that. That was one of the things each jurisdiction had to do was appoint someone to the policy committee. And ours would be Yvonne Wilson. I think appropriately so. She's not here, and that would be a okay. good thing. To do. You did I hear you correct? You said Nottoway County is or is not going to have someone on this. They point. will. Everyone involved okay. has to have one. Very good. Yep. So they will have one. They just didn't put it in the resolution. Um, yeah, so if you guys okay. have any questions. The, the only thing I, like, I think it's great to hold hands with the, the military because we've got a great partnership. But if you look at the wording the resolution, when it says, now therefore be resolved, you know, blah, 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 we'll consider the recommendations that result from the study. So no one's really being bound by anything. It's just. No, no I think that's the most important thing to consider. It's right. not a binding contract. It's just saying that we support them conducting this study. And when you all make future development decisions, you will look at their recommendations and what they found in the study before making any permanent decisions. It's not saying you will or will not do anything, just that you'll consider what they've found. Move to adopt, Mayor. Second. Mr. Green has moved, Mr. Scott has second to adopt. Emphasizing the word consider. I used to I tell people that all the time, I'll consider that, I'll consider that. <laughs> all, <laughs> all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, the yeah, ayes have it. Thank you so much and hope you're enjoying your council meeting. Sometimes this has been a rather dull one tonight. I thought it might get a little lively. Um, I have three requests from the town manager for committee referrals. Uh, one is this park aware that I get bombarded with emails on. Uh, I just I pass along because I hate to. P I think logically, maybe something to look at, but I do think downtown parking, and I have contact with the railroad now, to, to, if we can make sure that that may be referred to building and grounds or okay. whoever the appropriate committee. To downtown sure. parking, let's refer that to buildings and properties. And we'll make this a part of it. Maybe we can give you up the email. Drug and alcohol policy, that's definitely going to be employment personnel. And the rehire policy. What, what are you thinking of in terms of rehire policy? I'm just think, curious. What, what, what are we thinking about there? It's specific only to the bus shop. Okay. 
I'll also refer that to Employment and Police Committee. Very good. Um, under Mayor's Minute, I, what did I have? Oh, under Mayor's Minute, um, and this is something some of y'all know I've been thinking about, and I've probably told the town manager, Council President Thompson, due to the turnover on council that's going to take place on June 30th, um, as we did in 2010 when we also had five new folks coming on, I, and I want to offer this out of respect for the current council and also being transparent, the law will allow the five electeds to meet with one or two elected officials and staff before June 30th. And I just thought because of such a large turnover that it might be nice to hear from the staff manager and the council president and the mayor to hear from the five electeds to see what, if there are any issues of consensus that the new council can hit the ground running on. Uh, and it would be, you know, I did a, a similar meeting in my house back in 2010. Times were much more precarious then. There was a lot of uh, unrest, that sort of thing. That's not the case this time. And I just want to, as a professional courtesy, let the members of council know that's what I'm thinking about. And along that same line, and I would take notes, and I would even let the current members of council see what general topics were discussed. Um, but also, I, I, Ms. Thompson touched on something a few months ago. She thought it would be a good idea for members of, new members of council to go through what the VML offers. I think Mr. Green has been through it, new council orientation. And I've made the offer to the manager. I'm not a big fan of conferences, but because of the significant turnover, I would be willing to go at least for one day uh, with the new officials if that's Madam President, it went with me, and I will assure you that it is not a, a wine and cheese function. <laughs> it gets you up at breakfast and, and go till dinner, and you're ready to go to bed and go again. It's extremely informative and extremely helpful. I highly recommend it. Well, I was. Gonna, I believe, and it's I only three. I think is well. I think Jennifer Hardy sent me something. You found out sometime in July. There's an event in downtown Richmond, I believe. And they haven't ironed down the location. Okay. In July, so it'll be after you take office. But um, I, I guess my my point is this: two point. I will schedule a time for the uh, and talk with the new council members elected about time we can get together. Um, and I think the town manager wants to also give a bus tour of town facilities in that same outing. Probably a two or three hour affair. We we'll get together, and be social as well, and then also if staff could alert the the five new electeds and also anyone on the council about the new council orientation, so we can make plans to attend those that wish to and. That would be great. Um, Mr. Miller, it, it, I've been to two, and it's usually the travel day. You come in and register and orientation, pick up your stuff, and then a good full day, and then the next day, a good day until they feed you lunch, and then you're dismissed. That's usually what it is. <clears throat> um, we have one item I know, well, before I go to closed session, this is the second of two opportunities that members of the council, us, the, the public, may address council on anything that concerns them or any questions they have about anything that was discussed tonight. Anyone wish to address council at this time? Mr. Mitchell? Well, uh, I don't know if you call the police or not. Did you have anything, you have anything important, Chief? We're going to start our, our since McDonald's has been re re uh, re re remodeled. Yes, and we started coffee with the cops back again. Beautiful. In in June, and then in September we started cookouts again. Hard to believe. It's that time of the year, though. Look forward gonna, to that. You're gonna be the cook man that Mr. Oh. Strandler's retired. We'll use you. <laughs> That's right. We got. We know he can cook. <laughs> Anyone else tonight? I see Miss Doris win. Yes. Yes. You, so you'd like the town having the funeral director assess that charge? Yeah, I okay. That's, I think that's right. okay, very good. Mm -hmm. The second thing about the, um, the, the regulations about how the state agencies help the people who have their family uh, plots and so forth. Right. And I don't know if it would be a possibility since there's no building to put it on, but if there could be something uh, maybe be published in the paper once or twice, but also something visible near the cemetery. And uh, to, to concur with what, Good you, point. what you said about uh, the cemetery being beautiful, I have, I, I have relatives come down here uh, from the Shenandoah Valley originally, that every one of them has spoken uh, 
beautifully about how the cemetery was kept. They, well, said, they said it's the prettiest one they've seen, and the valley is full of cemeteries. Yes, indeed. Well, that's it's very nice to hear. We, you, end, you, you, all, you have a knack for ending meetings on a positive note. You did that a few months ago. I said, well, <laughs> you certainly will. And, and just, just so you all can hear what I'm going to say to Billy, number one, some of us are, are a lot older than you get to the front door in time before you leave. Oh. And the second thing is, uh, I wish to goodness I had known Ms. Rand was going to shred those recipes because I bet you the baker's been auctioned off and that money could have gone to the armory. Mm. Um, and so we might want to put something in the paper to encourage people to donate them to somewhere or someone um, who would organize them and maybe a group of people could test them. And Very good. Made a lot of, yeah, people still do cook. Well, that's that's true. Even even in my house. <laughs> move to strike. Move to strike. Anyone else tonight, Sally? Don't say a word. I didn't say that. Anyone else tonight before we go in closed session? Beverly Ams, it's so good to see you again. It's been a while. Well, I'll still come up with my other stuff, but I'll wait for the new council. Um, <laughs> no, back with this cemetery thing, we were concerned about funding for it. My mom used to be J T. Morrison's son, J T.'s executive secretary. Okay. He owned cemeteries, and she and he didn't realize how much property he actually owned across the state until she got into his books. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> does JT want to uh, look down here, maybe? Uh, well, no, JT does not. He oh, I know. Just for a long maybe his heirs would like to. His grandson Allison is now in charge. Okay. Um, but it may be a thought to have the funeral home in the future look at purchasing it and and maintaining just because it is an expense right but they can end up making money yeah the, i think maybe talking to the town manager that they wouldn't have to buy it they could be, they we, could be town gifted. might might <laughs> call it a deed of conveyance <laughs> exactly thank you it's a very good point very good point i mean i would never have known about it except 40 something years ago right most towns around here do happen to have a municipal cemetery, but there's nothing in the state code that requires a local government to, to bury people. Not only county owns zero cemeteries. Good state, point. Right. I, I know what you're saying. The state regulations about how, how one is to be interred, correct. They, have to, they are, but as we discovered, you know, there are a lot of old cemeteries in, in this part of the state that have not been well kept, and it seems to be without any repercussions. Um, but thank you, everyone. There's actually who go out and find those. There are, there are. Anyone else to speak before we have, Mr. Manager, do we still have a closed session tonight? Yes, we have a closed session for personnel. Yes, Anyone else? I'd entertain a motion for council to have a closed meeting for personnel at the bus shop. So moved. And what? And administration. And administration. So moved. All right. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Very good. Stand closed session. Thank you, Jason. I'll make my motion to the Senate.